Are you looking to learn about the Azure Cloud and how it's organized? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I'm the founder and CEO of GoCloud Careers. We're an organization that's dedicated towards building the most high performance cloud computing careers. Personally, I've been working in technology now for over 25 years and I've been helping others get their first tech job or get promoted in tech for more than two decades. And I wanna help you build your best cloud computing career. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Azure Cloud and how it's organized. Most specifically, we'll be discussing Azure Regions, Azure Availability Zones, Azure Edge Zones, and Azure Points of Presence. So we'll begin with Azure Regions and Azure Availability Zones. An Azure region is a very large geographic area. Think a continent or part of a continent. And think of an availability zone as a data center inside of that large geographic region. So as you can see in this graphic, we've got a blue box which refers to this big, large geographic region. And on this big blue box, the region, we have multiple buildings. Each building represents a data center. And a data center is referred to as an availability zone. Now, these Azure data centers are going to look and feel just like any other data center. They'll be filled with servers and storage and firewalls and load balancers and routers and switches, just like any other data center. And they'll be running the Azure Cloud software on their traditional data center hardware. Because the Azure data center is no different than anyone else's data center. It's just running some special software to turn it into a cloud. Now, let's discuss Azure Edge Zones. See, Azure Edge Zones are realistically speaking an extension of an Azure region to put low latency applications closer to the user. It enables businesses to have more computing power with lower latency for critical, high performance, low latency applications. So let's talk about why this is necessary. So normally speaking, in the traditional environment, we have our data center. And the data center in most cases is local to the campus where the most critical functions are performed. And because all of the users, all of the user information, all the applications and all the data are all so close to the user, there's almost no latency. So if we need the highest performance of all kind and the lowest latency being in the data center is where it's at. But the cloud is so much more agile. It has better scalability. There's a whole bunch of reasons to go to the cloud and that's why we love the cloud. So that's why we've migrated to the cloud. But the cloud is not local to us. In many cases, the cloud could be a thousand miles away. So here's the challenge. We have our data center and we have the cloud, two great services, but there's a cable between these things or a VPN or a private line, Express Connect, Direct Connection, Direct Interconnect, depending upon where you're on the AWS cloud, the Azure cloud, the Google cloud, it's all multi-cloud anyway in today's world. But just understand that it could be a thousand miles and it could be million, it could be several milliseconds of latency between the the data center and the cloud provider. And under normal circumstances, that's fine, it's perfect, but for some critical low latency applications, it's too much. So the Azure Edge Zone is a midpoint, and you can see it in this graphic here, it's a midpoint. Between our data center and the Azure Cloud, there's an Edge Zone. And in this Edge Zone, we put our high performance, low latency computing in this Edge Zone, and guess what? We have the high performance close to us when we need it, and we have all the great scalability of the cloud, and now you know about the Azure Edge Zone. Now let's discuss the Azure Points of Presence. So the Azure Point of Presence is the location of the Azure Content Delivery Network. And Azure Point of Presence locations are available in most major cities, and Azure Point of Presence locations reduce the overhead on your web servers. Azure Point of Presence locations can also be used to increase the security of your web applications by decreasing DDoS attacks, as do all content delivery networks. And of course, we'll have a chance to talk about that when we talk about security. But going back to the Azure Point of Presence, in most major cities, they're there. And here's what happens. The Point of Presence, traditionally speaking, is a building where all of your internet service providers connect. So let's say we've got a giant building, we've got high-speed connections coming in from AT&T, Verizon, Telefonica, NTT, CenturyLink, Vodafone, you name it. All our big internet service providers are all gonna be in a single building. And what happens is inside of this building where all the internet service providers have high-speed connections to the building, they create connections between their switches. And the reason this occurs, when we do things on the internet, we go to our internet service provider and if 
something we're looking for is on our internet service provider, we're great. We never leave our internet service provider. But let's say I want to go to a website that's hosted by Verizon and I'm in my house and my internet service provider is AT&T. The way internet routing will occur is I will go to my ISP, I will leave my ISP and go to Verizon. And where that handoff between ISPs occur is with the point of presence. So the point of presence locations are where we have our highest speed connections connecting our internet service providers. So think about how smart this was for Azure to use these point of presence locations. All your internet service providers effectively are in a logical area. And in a point of presence, we're gonna stick our caching servers in the Azure Content Delivery Network. Excellent, super smart. The Azure Content Delivery Network will do wonders for improving our performance, our security, and our scalability. Now let's walk you through the Azure Point of Presence Content Delivery Network in action. So here we've got a user. The user's wearing a blue shirt and an orange tie. The user wants to go to www.gocloudcareers.com. So the user enters www.gocloudcareers.com on the browser. Their computer does a DNS lookup and says, okay, here's the IP address for www.gocloudcareers.com. So then the PC goes to that IP address through the use of the networks. And the first location it's going to go to is that point of presence or content delivery network pint. And what happens, the user is going to go to that point of presence and it's going to see if that web page that he or she requested was there. And if it's not there, they'll go back to the source. So the user up top in the blue, in the blue shirt will go to the point of presence location. The point of presence location will look and say, do you have it? And if it doesn't, it goes straight to Azure where our virtual machines and our blob storage are hosting our, our website. All is great. That sends it back to the point of presence and it sends it back to the user. Now the next user that wants to go to the same website, www.gocloudcareers.com before the cache time is out, will go to that same Azure point of presence location. And guess what? It will be there from the first user and the web page will be immediately sent to the user. So faster because it's cached, uses less data, and less web server time because the web servers aren't even responding to anything other than the first request. So that's the Azure point of presence location and that's how content delivery networks work. So what did we discuss today? We discussed Azure regions. We discussed Azure availability zones. We discussed Azure edge locations and we discussed Azure points of presence. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. Take care. It was so nice having you join us for this video today. Let me tell you about some free services we do for the cloud community. Once per week, we actually have a free question and answer session on live on YouTube, where you can come and ask us any questions you want about building your career related to cloud computing or networking, and we'll answer them in real time for you because we want to get you to your goals. Several more times per week, we have guests from industry industry experts that I have known for decades that are movers and shakers that have changed the world that can give you information so you can build the best career. I invite them periodically. They are on my show. If there's a chance to do some free training on our channel, we'll do it live because we want you to all to have the best skills for the best career. So please subscribe and hit the bell. I look forward to seeing you and I look forward to assisting you in your technology career. Thank you so much. This is Michael Gibbs from Go Cloud Architect.